Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to another episode. Working on OpenShift. And sometimes we haven't This is so we awesome. We are an open culture that it's, believes it's actually in the place of the component for your get Everybody has something that they can say. On top of the Red Hat portfolio. All right, and we are live. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of GitOps Guide to the Galaxy. I will be your captain, Christian. Um, so today, I have a co-captain. My, my co-captain today, I don't know which way the camera's pointing. I think I could go like this, um, is uh, Shubik Bose. So Shubik Bose is a, uh, a principal software engineer at Red Hat, one of the guys I'm always bugging about OpenShift GitOps. Um, he's one of the main guys I try to... Um, uh, I try to uh, try not to bother too much, but um, as, 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 as he knows, I'm a, a little bit opinionated, and I'm always get excited when he talks about um, talks about GitOps. So, uh, so uh, Shubik, how are you doing today? How how's how's the uh, um, how's Diwali treating you? Doing great. I think um, have some plans in the evening for Diwali, but. So far, I'm here right now with all of you and Jung Diwali with GetOps for a change. Nice. There you go. Yes, ex exactly. Exactly. So th thank you for, for joining us. Um, so uh, today's topic, right, we're going to talk about um, OpenShift GetOps version 1.3, like all the new things that um, we get with uh, OpenShift, um, uh, OpenShift GetOps uh, version 1.3 and kind of like a look into the future. Um, a lot of people ask... Um, and also, like in the community, it's like, hey, I installed Argo on, on OpenShift, and it's kind of like, you know, kind of acting weird. It's like, well, did you install it via the, the operator? Or you go, oh, no, I just installed Argo. So, you know, I, I like, I always like to bring up OpenShift GetOps because it is the entry point on how to get um, Argo City installed on OpenShift. Um, and uh, a lot of the, the stuff, a lot of the headaches used to configure Argo is taken out of the way. But before we get to that, I do want to talk about a few things, uh, kind of uh, top of mind sort of things. Um, first and foremost, I think, uh, and I will put it here in the chat, um, ArgoCon, the schedule is out. So there it is. So there is the uh, ArgoCon schedule. Um, if you want to take a look, um, I, I threw it in the chat there. Um, I have a talk, so um, you know, kind of a selfish plug. I have a talk there on uh, ArgoCon. I'm talking about uh, stateful applications and GitOps because that's always a um, uh, a uh, hot topic, right? I've talked about it on the show before, um, and if you um, want to catch that episode, the past episodes are on uh, on the YouTube playlist. So um, another thing I want to talk about is let's see if I could find it real quick. Is the um, uh, GetOps Con itself, the the videos now are, are on all are on YouTube. So let me find that playlist. There we go. Found it. Um, let me put that in the chat as well. So um, uh, this playlist here is uh, everything that went down with in GetOps Con. Uh, GetOps Con uh, was a uh, something that the uh, CNCF uh, Open GetOps project, which uh, you know Red Hat takes a part of. We put on as a day zero event. All the talks are up there. Great talks. Uh, I gave a talk, another selfish plug. So if you want to, <laughs> um, uh, actually uh, about another project that Shubik is on about pipeline as code, but we'll we'll talk about that maybe on another day. Have a whole episode about pipeline as code. Um, so you can check that out as well. Um, yeah, your talk was good. And, so yes, do check uh, that out. Yeah. So yeah, check it out. So if you don't know what, when I say pipeline as code, you guys are a little confused. That's actually a good intro. I did a talk, great intro about pipeline as code and kind of like the idea behind getting your a CI as um, you know get opsified. I guess I, I guess it would be a, a good a, a good way to say it here. Um, and uh, or and kind of to round it out here um, for those of you. Um, uh, friend and colleague started a uh, kind of a, a, a developer group, right, in the BIT network, right, Women in Technology. If you want to check that out, if you want, she's done a lot of great work there. Um, if you're a developer, engineer, or whatever, you want to join a great community, that's a great community there. Um, I promised her I'd mention that on the, sh on the stream today. Um, so I think it, it, it's great. Um, 
last but not least, selfish plug, because as as you know, Shubik, I'm I'm not ashamed of doing a plug here. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, right, right. It's 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 you know it's my show. Why not? Um, <laughs> Uh, in uh, speaking of open source and Argo CD in in the upstream community, I have a little pet project called Go Go KP. Um, that is, um, it, it's an idea about a GitOps um, friendly Kubernetes platform. So um, this is kind of like a pet project of mine. I've already put it on Reddit. So if you guys want to join the uh, Open GitOps Reddit. It's right there, so you can see my post there about it if you want to get more involved. Um, and also, if you want to get involved in Reddit, there's already Reddit hate on it, which that means it's great. I love Reddit hate. <laughs> That's what exactly what I wanted, right? I wanted I wanted feedback, right? Sometimes you you the, the hate is good. Um, so I think that's it. With that, I think I've talked enough. Shubik, what what do you have for us? With regards to OpenShift GitOps, OpenShift GitOps, what what is it? What is this new um, update? What do you see in the future? What what what, what do you what do you got for us? What do you got some inside information? Absolutely, yeah. Thank you very much. So I think yeah, well, so I think we are probably running with OpenShift GitOps and not just walking or crawling mm -hmm. right now. <laughs> <laughs> so I think. Full sprint, things change, right? <laughs> full sprint, and things change yeah. every day. Like while I'm talking, we are doing a release right now. And yeah, so while I'm talking, <laughs> we are going to have a new release in a few days. Um, so yeah, I think um, we're 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 seeing a bunch of changes going into OpenShift GitOps, both from the perspective of mm -hmm. how you run GitOps, how you run the GitOps control plane, just so that admins are a lot more comfortable doing that, um, to actually ensuring that in the long term, when it's running on your cluster, it's not killing your cluster because you have a ton of developers who are putting things um, to sync from you know Git to your cluster. So we are doing a bunch of improvements on how you install it, how you configure it securely to how do you manage the performance over time. And mm -hmm. today I'm going to talk about a bunch of those. I'm actually going to ensure that you have some context about some of the different caching mechanisms and what are the things we're doing to get make them better. Oh. Um, there you go. As well as talking about how do you make every service securely talk to each other um, in the control plane. So um, be, so, so I think, so I think, Irrespective of whether you're a developer or an admin in the audience, um, there's a lot of interesting things that are going on, which I'll talk about today. Sweet. So I think actually, uh, I think um, one of the engineers, uh, uh, Jonathan, I think his name was, yeah, made a great post about. He has like a readme somewhere about like how the caching works. Or go see. Let me find to see if I can, I can, I can yeah. share that with with the people because I think. I read that and I was like, oh, this is... This there's is a lot going on yeah. there. And I think, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot going on. It's like, I didn't even realize yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, actually, they do have it here. Let me find it. See, this may be old, maybe maybe not. Who knows? But um, I put that in the chat so you guys can check it out. Yeah, but it's going to be definitely helpful as something about a point in time caching mechanism. So, yeah. Okay. So I think I'll probably go ahead with showing what I've got. Let's see here. We're waiting, doing technical things here, trying to share the screen as always. Yeah, so if you look at the so it so this is this is kind of weird. So if you look down, it looks like your search screen is disabled, but it's actually not disabled. You actually have to click on it. I don't know if you see it. Um you want me to just I see a stop screen sharing here. Ah, okay. So if you Sorry, stop and then restart it. Yeah, let me just try it out. Yeah. Awesome. This has shown up. If you can see it now, Christian. Let's see here. Yes, there we go. Awesome, that tip helped. I All right, yeah, turning it, it off just, and on. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Always right. Awesome. Thank you very much, Christian. Um, so yeah, I think we'll dive straight into this. Today we'll be talking about some of the salient improvements we've done in OpenShift GitOps 1.3. Um, it won't be demo heavy. Rather, it'll be 
a lot of conversation heavy and slides heavy, but not from yep. um, general, general slides. I'd, 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 I'd like to ensure I use this opportunity to tell the audience how a lot of things work inside OpenShift GetOps and Argo CD and um, how things are improving over time. And if you see something that's not working, you kind of will get a hint of why something is not working. Um, so which is why I dive into some of the details in this show. So let's see next slide. Um, so a quick recap, what is OpenShift GetOps? Um, so the charter of OpenShift GitOps is very simple. Um, you read manifests from Git. You look for equivalent resources on the cluster. Determine if they're different, if they're present. If they're not present, they're definitely different. Um, and if you see there's something different, just shout out out of sync. And then if it's out of sync, it's going to reconcile to your desired state. And then you've got to repeat this till eternity. And that's all OpenShift GitOps is going to do for you for a bunch of complex Kubernetes YAMLs that you going to put in your Git repository. Um, now, what is OpenShift GitOps really, really, really? It's basically, pa it, it packages Argo CD in a way that you could deploy with multiple deployment topologies. And Argo CD engine is the one that ensures that this charter we have on the left is well taken care of. Um, so before I go to this slide, I'd like to show this. So yeah, so what's OpenShift GitOps? We have different modes of, so if you know what Argo CD is, um, this is going to be a little helpful for you then. Um, OpenShift GitOps ensures you can effectively deploy Argo CD in multiple variants of topologies. Uh, one is where you effectively have cluster configuration done across your own whole cluster using a central mechanism, which is Argo CD on your cluster. Um, the other is effectively when you say, hey, I have a nice development team who needs an Argo CD. And yes, we can do that for you with OpenShift GitOps, which works within the isolation of specific namespaces. Um, and of course, the other mechanism is, hey, I've got these 100 clusters sitting out there, and I need to centrally sit and manage all of these. So you could have OpenShift GitOps on one cluster and manage 100 clusters using those, um, even though you may not necessarily be managing your own cluster with it. Um, so these are the different mechanisms um, which OpenShift GitOps makes it easy for you to use on an OpenShift cluster with Argo CD. Yeah, the, the the guys at um uh, at Intuit, right? I had them on, and they're actually doing that whole uh, central hub push mechanisms for hundreds of clusters, right? Hundreds yeah. of clusters, uh, thousands of 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 applications. So it, right. it, it actually, if if you're worried about scale, don't don't, don't worry about scale because yeah. it, Intuit beat, beats it up a lot. <laughs> yep, yep, absolutely. If you have done a bunch of financial transactions online, you've definitely gone yes. through a system which yes, has been exactly. barred by. Ar Argo CD and into it. So, yeah. yeah, especially here in the US where right. <laughs> when, tech, when tax season comes, they're they right. Get pretty, yeah, they get pretty <laughs> right. So, before we go deeper into different things, I had to show this customary slide, uh, which thanks to William Tam, who started putting this up a few days ago, and I had to slow this, show this. So, we are at 1.3.1 now. Um, and this is the map of the different component versions. You don't have to memorize this. But in case you need it sometimes, you're going to put it on OpenShift Docs. Um, and we're going to ensure that you have a way to get to this. But the idea is, if sometimes you suddenly feel, hey, this seems to be not working, but it should have been working, which version do I have on? Um, a reference like this is going to come handy, and I'm going to share this with you as well. Sweet. Yeah, that's a great matrix, by the way, because it's I'm yeah. always asked, like, which version? Are you yeah. on well? What OpenShift version? Yeah, so it's 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 uh, it's it's good to good to know. Matrix and people love matrices. So. Oh yeah, <laughs> like like it looks scary when you look at it, but then if you need mm -hmm. it, it's your best friend. It's kind exactly of <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I think the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go and install OpenShift GitOps on my cluster. Again, it's a refresher to ensure we all know how the installation experience looks like. Um, can you see my OpenShift screen? Yeah, you can. Yeah, sure. can you make it a little bigger? Uh, control yeah. plus. There we go. There we go. Cool. Yeah. Let's see. Um, let's go to operator hub. Type open shift. Oops. Yeah. I don't know. Open shift. Get ops. So neat dialogue I need, here. I need that logo on a t-shirt, man. I don't I know. know. I'm, gonna ask, uh, I'm, I'm trying to like. I know corporate doesn't like uh, doesn't like logos like that on a t-shirt, but I really yeah. want one. <laughs> this looks good. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. I think. Um, as soon as you go in here, uh, it gives you a nice clean install button. Um, it'll basically give you a bunch of information here itself. Um, but, effect but effectively, we just go 
we're just going to go ahead and hit install we're not going to choose any other options along the way we're just going to say install install and seen, while we're seeing defaults right yeah 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 that's, that's totally yeah yeah and then i think while this is happening um going to quickly give you an overview of what's happening out here in case you're an admin who wants to peel the layers and want to know you know what's what's happening behind the scenes so this effectively is going in and installing an operator or a controller for you to manage argo cd control planes itself um and then it's going to also install an argo cd for you mm -hmm. to manage cluster configuration what that means is if you just if you just provision the cluster and you need to basically set up user management and a bunch of these things, um, this will ensure that it does all of that for you. This, this, this will ensure your Argo CD is warmed up to do all that for you, to be precise. Sorry about that. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, I see that it's installed. I'm going to wait for maybe four seconds, four or five seconds to ensure behind the scenes the Argo CD is actually coming up. Um, yes. But we can go ahead and check that out. <laughs> So yeah, like so it looks yeah. Uh yeah. So while that's actually there's a looks like there's a question here. There's that talks about hope this version fixes the missing permission for Argo CD to deploy in any namespace. Oh just yes. installed GitOps operator 1.3.0 and getting a namespace not being managed. Right. I think that was addressed in the 1.3.1, right? One. That's correct. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So so that's going go. to be yeah. there in time one to upgrade. Yeah. <laughs> time to upgrade, absolutely. Yes. That fixes in there. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm running uh, 1.3.1 now, as I showed you. So yeah, you, you should have this, definitely. OK, I see a bunch of things running here. Um, here we go. That's can, always a good good sign. I can still see something is not yet ready, but it's ready now. Awesome. But let's try it out. Worst case, it's not going to work. Nothing more than that. Yes, worst uh, case, doesn't work. Doesn't work. Which, yeah. people, which people like seeing, by the way. It's always a, always a weird thing. People love, love <laughs> it when, when things break live. Right, right, including myself. So I mean, it's it's, yeah. like it's a human thing. Awesome. So right here, I've got OpenShift GitOps installed. Uh, for those who haven't seen it in the past, and I'm going to go and click here. And there then, yeah, awesome. It just tell, told me that I need to authorize um, OpenShift yeah. GitOps to use my OpenShift authentication to log into GitOps. Yes. So this is this is one of those things, right? Where it's like this is the value of using the operator because the operator yeah. does all this for you. This used to be a very manual step. It's like setting yeah. up um, DEX with uh, um, OIDC or uh, setting up OIDC directly or setting up with um, SSO, right? Now it's just it's just all integrated. If you go if you if you go to the the user tab, it actually shows that you're um, uh, that Correct. you're cube admin, right? So like all that information comes through, which is which is pretty cool. Which is this is one of the values you get right with the operator, automatic setup. Absolutely, yeah. So yeah, so we have this installed, um, and then you can do a bunch of interesting things. So I think this is one one this is one of the first things which I wanted to show folks that um, you don't necessarily have to go in and install Red Hat SSO to be able to log in with OpenShift. Uh, of course, you could if you wanted to want to want to do that um, because. The, Red Hat SSO gives a bunch of other powerful features which you wouldn't have without it. But if mm -hmm. you are looking for a simple login um, and pull in the groups, this will just work for you. With that, I'll go back to slides for some time so that I can set up more context for more things. So yeah, um, one of the first key things we did is, you know, we're trying to ensure that a whole login authentication and authorization experience is a lot more smooth than it ha has been in the past. Um, so we are actually executing on multiple fronts on that. Um, we, are, we ensured this time we actually added support for DEX only for the OpenShift login bits. So I think a uh, quick disclaimer, um, to do not use DEX for other purposes other than OpenShift GitOps login with OpenShift and authorization with OpenShift. That's my disclaimer. Um, yeah. But yeah. Um, <laughs> Asterisk, right? Yes, you can use it, but only with OpenShift GitOps. <laughs> yes, please. Yeah. <laughs> Right, so 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 we have that here. Um, here's like if you are interested in looking how the CR looks like, um, you've probably seen this already with the community operator. Um, this supported again. Um, we have the policies set up out out of the box so that you don't have to worry about them. And interestingly, if you are somebody who already has, um, you know, Red Hat SSO set up in your customer environment, or you have a key clock set up which you want to reuse, um, you could potentially use that as well. Um, and because I think some key improvements are happening in that space, it's not available right now, uh, but it's going to be sh uh, shipped in a month or so. 
Um, the Red Hat SSO or Keyclog is going to have support for syncing of OpenShift groups into Argo CD. Um, for those interested, the change has already been merged. Um, so it's there, it's been tested. Um, you're probably just waiting for the next release of Red Hat SSO to release, have that feature. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we need to test software, so I mean, it's, right. it's, I mean, it, yeah. So it's coming. So we just we want to make sure you know it passes all the developers all green, have right? tested it. Has to go a little beyond yes. that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, so it has to go through CI, right? So yeah. let's let's do that. Showing green. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, so we have this improvement, um, and then there's another work in progress improvement, which are going to land. Uh, onto your cluster soon. The, we, are, we, are, we, are, we are going to continue improving this. Um, but then the general idea, and my slide is a bit messed up on the left. No worries. Um, uh, well, it's YAML, right? When you type yeah, YAML, YAML we, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's if the problem. Someone, if someone could look at it and say, that's invalid YAML, I'm, I'm going to give them a prize. I know. <laughs> it, I only know it when there's an error. I'm like, oh, OK. Yeah, there's it didn't that. work, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it didn't work. That's the only time I know. <laughs> Yeah, so so I think one of the requests that we've got that we should be running the GitOps control plane on the on you know nodes which have been designated as infra nodes, and uh, we wanted to make a lot of progress on that, and we've made a ton of progress on that. But yeah, do do expect improvements. But right now we've got something for you, which is um, there is a top level GitOps service that we've always hidden from all of you, oh. and we're going to gradually open that up. Um, the idea is. The cluster config GitOps instance is the only one which we'll allow right now to move around to infra nodes. Um, oh, because geez. if you did that with the others, we might get into weird territory where developers are moving the stuff around in different nodes, but they should not be doing that. Um, so yeah, um, in, in general, what we are going to do is we have something called GitOps service resource, which gets bootstrapped for all of you on your clusters all the time. You probably just haven't checked it. But if you go there, you will see there is a resource called GitOps Service Cluster that is on your clusters already. If you have opened installed OpenShift GitOps, you can now put run on infra true after attaching the right labels on your nodes, and it's going to move your workloads onto that node. Um, further, if you have toleration set up, you could even specify that on that resource. No, and that. This will only impact your cluster config GitOps um, yes. instance yeah, yeah. for obvious reasons. So nice, nice. So this is a kind. It was a kind of like a hidden object. Now you're kind of like opening up that object to, yep. um, to control where those 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 um those workloads right. land, right? So for the, for those that don't know that are using OpenShift, that there's a concept of uh, infrastructure nodes, and if you're using infrastructure nodes, um, they don't count against the subscription, right? So they're we're basically they're free. They're free cores, right? You, we don't you know, um, we don't charge for those. So um. To free up some of those resources that like Argo CD takes takes on, now we're adding the ability to kind of all right, let's move those workload those like you know Argo CD like the Argo CD uh, re um, repo controller right or the um, uh, what uh, yeah the, so the, the, there's the, Git the controller, application there's, controller repo server yeah the application server. application set server yeah like all those yeah. stuff that so yeah. gets run Argo cool. Yeah, the idea is that if you're paying for OpenShift, you should be paying for the applications you deploy on. And yeah, yeah, applications exactly. we deploy on as part of the control <laughs> yeah. plane. And, yes, yes. And this kind of exactly. fixes that. Uh, yeah. So yeah. Cool. But, but yeah, please do expect a lot of improvements, non-breaking improvements happening in this space, just to ensure that we can gradually run a control plane isolated on a set of nodes that should not be counting towards your subscription. Um, with that, we're going to move ahead with some of the security enhancements. Um, but before that, I think you were just talking about this question a while ago, different components <laughs> of Argo CD. Um, yeah, so so roughly we've got the application controller, the repo server, the Argo CD API server. These are all different components that live on the control plane today. And um, if you are an admin uh, who has installed OpenShift GitOps just so that your other admins can go ahead and configure it to have you know GitOps used for the cluster, mm -hmm. uh, or if you are an admin who's allowed other developers to install their own Argo CD instances, um, you would definitely be concerned about one thing: the control plane better be secure. Because if the control plane is not secure, um, you could potentially do an escalation of privilege into everything else. Um, so which is why um, we are constantly investing behind the scenes on how to integrate good security practices in the control plane, which 
should really be boring for all of you. It should not really be something you should care about. But if you do care about, I'm going to talk about some of the tuning, some of the uh, knobs that you can turn to provide specific levels of security. Right, so let's talk about the routes. I think we've got a oh, bunch okay. of, we've had a yeah. bunch of feedback on this. Um, and I see again a place where my YAML should have been a little better formatted. A little bit, yeah, yeah, but it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, so, in, so in general, the first thing which I'd like to mention is um, in OpenShift today, we have an amazing model of securing routes and services. Um, and this, is going to ensure, and this capability that I'm going to talk to you about now is going to ensure you're able to use that in the way you think would work for your setup. Um, on that note, when you actually went in and installed OpenShift GetOps, you could basically go in and open the console, or you had a bunch of services you had there. Um, now, we want to ensure that anything that's exposed to the internet is well Secure, secured. Anything that's not exposed to the internet should also be secured. What that means is any intra service communication happening in the control plane should be as secure as anything that's outside. We call it zero yes. trust, right? So that's yeah. Thing. So, yeah, I think here's, here are the different things. Like when you say pass through, that's effectively where your encrypted requests from the outside world to your control plane is going to go directly to the service encrypted. That's called pass through. That's what the default is today. Um, we did not want that to be the default one. We actually wanted um, re-encrypt to be the default, to be very yeah. frank. But then we did not yeah. do it um, mm -hmm. because we, as you, we, we are sure that a lot of our users, customers would have something set up. We didn't want to break that. Um, yeah. That's the only reason. If, if you can find a nicer way to make that a default with a very cleaner migration for folks who already have something, we are going to do it yeah. in the upcoming releases. Yeah. Um, but the good news is, um, if you are looking for something like re-encrypt, um, so, I, so I think I'll quickly go over the, the differences between the three of them. So edge is basically where your traffic is decrypted from the encrypted state into the edge of your network without before it the traffic reaches your internal services. That's called edge. Um, re-encrypt is where, when it's basically intercepted at your edge and then re-encrypted when you're sending it to your internal service. That's called re-encrypt. Now, of course, pass, pass through is when you don't decrypt it at all. At the edge, you just send it and let the service deal with it. Yeah, it's so basically of course, yeah. like yeah. basically a TCP socket, right? And it's just the the actual service itself. They're actually Argo CD pod or whatever um, handles the encryption, right? Versus, yeah. So basically, is uh, yeah. this this encryption is like basically where the encryption and decryption happens, right? Because correct. It, um, Depending on what what you're doing, you care, right? You care where where um, where it happens, right? So, right. Um, uh, so yeah, so yeah. No, I can see uh, that update. By the way, is very useful for me because um, um, you know part of my job is I I, I create a lot of training content, mm -hmm. and some of these platforms they don't like it when you don't um, you know like when you do a, a pass through. Right. And, and like yeah. the edge router wants to do like, uh, like, you know, it doesn't, um, trust it doesn't that like pass through. Yeah. Exactly. It doesn't like pass through. And it's just like, like okay, I'm there well, for a that's... reason and you're passing yeah, yeah. through. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so this is really cool. Yeah. So I think since we're talking about your know, different services, I think I'm going to use this diagram to kind of show, you know, what, what are the different components. So, um, so the API server is something that's fairly exposed um, because, sorry, um, so there's an Argo City server that's actually a little more exposed. Um, in, in in general, your 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 controller is probably the only non-HTTP thing. The others are all either HTTP or gRPC. And you want to ensure that all of these are actually secure. Um, and so if you want, you could actually go into your setup that's me. Let me see if I can show you which exact place you should be doing this. Um, so you could actually go in here and, you know, route enable true. You could actually go in and modify these with one of the options that you would have here. Um, and and here are the three options you have. You didn't have so many options in the past. Um, but yeah, these would just work. And um, a key important thing just to kind of explain why some of this has not been trivial in the past, um, is that with re-encrypt, 
you need to you you also need to teach the router or rather you you also need to ensure that your internal service is trusting the traffic from your router so you actually need the internal service to have in its possession the ca certificate um, mm -hmm. and the argo cd server today that component uh, let me see if i can show you that component here um, so i go to my deployments so there is this uh, server component here so you so you you need to ensure that this component has the right tls certificates configured for it why this is where your openshift ca has to land yep. you cannot just give it an openshift ca and it will know where to pick it up from why because this is the service which has actually has to trust the openshift external router because that's what we do in reencrypt and yeah this update actually not only gives you the certificates, it tells Argo CD, here's where you need to look for OpenShift CA certificates, one. And it also ensures your route is configured with the right um, certificate pair so that external requests can be encrypted. Um, so it does a bunch of things behind the scenes when you're actually um, you know, going for this one, going for the uh, yeah, termination as re-encrypt. In the future, we're going to also come up with better migration mechanisms between these, um, primarily because um, you may have a situation where you went for re-encrypt, but for some reason, you would want to go back to edge. Um, today, and we're, we're going to document these, there are a bunch of manual steps, not a bunch of manual steps. You have to really remove the old certificate before you move to the edge one. Um, and the main reason we want to do this is we don't want to mess with something that you put in yourself. Um, yeah, and not yeah. something that OpenShift put in. Um, so yeah, um, this is just to, you know, some some of these are boring details, but I just wanted to let you know that these things have been considered when we designed this. Um, so what that means is you can safely go in and turn these knobs, put it to re-encrypt and ensure that you have multi-level encryption set up, or you could go to edge and ensure that it's an edge set up, or you could live with pass through the way it is right now. Yeah, yeah. So, and it's, and it's really dependent on um, what, um, um, also what, what like industry you're in, right? What vertical you're, you're working on. Cause for me, I've always liked edge, right? Because it's like, if, if someone gets into my network, then if someone's yeah. sniffing my Argo CD traffic, I have bigger problems, right? Or, or they're like, right. uh, I guess a, a dumb person because there's much more interesting things on my network, but I can, <laughs> but you know, that's not to say that like, you know, re-encrypt is probably like the best thing, right? Because, um, um, you know, you have zero trust, right? Like, you know, I got, I, I only trust this specific certificate that you're giving me to de decrypt the traffic. And so then it gets encrypted, decrypted, it encrypted again going. So you have like an end to end encryption. And I think um, if you can swing that, I think, I think that's like the way to go, right? Don't be lazy right. like me is what I'm saying. I, and, <laughs> and the best thing is, Christian, the best thing is OpenShift actually provides a bunch of those certifications like certificate generation mechanisms. Um, yeah, out so, of the box, yeah. Yeah, and which is very cool, I would say, to be honest. Like, like as an OpenShift user, sometimes when I deploy a simple, you know, Go REST application, I'm like, damn, I, I need search, I, 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 I need search for these. And then you just need to put in an annotation and it's there. Uh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it's pretty cool. I think the general considerations I would do in probably some of the large installations would be, um, do you care about the fact that when you re-encrypt, there is an extra CPU intense operation that's happening? If you mm -hmm. don't, then you're good. Um, but I think beyond Every, that, yeah. re-encrypt Everything's a, a cost, right? Yeah, if you're encrypting right. that, it, it, there's, there's a cost of CPU, definitely. Yeah. Right, with that, um, there is another area that we have to secure, and I, you're probably not exposed to this component, of OpenShift GitOps or Argo CD, but I'm going to again go back to this diagram. So there's something called a repo server on the right here. Um, that is the component which talks to Git. Um, it caches a bunch of the stuff that you have on Git. It basically knows how to talk to Git, and it ensures and and it it, it is basically your gateway to the world of Git um, internally. So which is why it is of prime importance to ensure that we encrypt that traffic that goes there as well. Um, so which is why you could actually specify, you know, an auto TLS called OpenShift for your repo section in your Argo CD config. And that will ensure that you are, you, you have secure traffic directed 
to your Argo CD repo server component. Um, by default, we keep it as true so that you don't have to make a choice and it's boring for you. Um, but of course, for whatever reason, if you don't like it, you have to go and attest that verified TLS false, uh, which is I am happily making it insecure because um, as you've probably heard in OpenShift, we are secure by default. Um, to go for non-secure is an option you choose, um, not something yeah. that's- well, we, we, let, we let you make that mistake. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <we'll>... right. <laughs> that's you have to consciously it. make that. Yes, yeah. So yeah. does that auto, so I actually have a question. So now this is this is me being the end yeah. user. So this this uh, auto TLS OpenShift, does that mean it just takes um, whatever OpenShift's, um, whatever OpenShift trusts and puts it in that- um, Right, um, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So for um uh so for those for those that you, the that don't know, so um in OpenShift, um if you have in your environment, if you have the um uh the the if you have like a self-signed certificate, right? So a lot of places have their own custom CA server, right, in, internally and their own and they use that to sign all their certificates. You can actually upload that to OpenShift and have OpenShift trust it, right? So in this, it sounds like this option, what it's doing is saying, yes. all right, whatever OpenShift's trusting, I'm going to trust it as well. So then that way, when you connect to those Git repos, um, um, you you automatically trust it with those um, with that with that certificate. Correct. Yes, and and the most important bit here is that um, you you actually ensure that OpenShift is going to renew those certificates at the right time for you and ensure that it's made available for your components. So you wouldn't be in a situation where it expires uh, and you know, you're know you stuck, which you would probably be if you're doing it yourself. So that, 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 that that's a huge advantage we have in OpenShift in general. Um, this feature knows effectively how to utilize that and ensure that you're running a secure repo server, which some may argue and well, nobody is exposed to this service apart from Argo CD itself, but why do we care? Um, yeah. But then, yeah, if you're going through an audit of your systems, I'm pretty sure you would care, but even without that, you should care, I would say. Yeah, there's there's actually a question, and I'm not sure if you know. I I, I kind of know this this answer. So um, so Walid, by, by the way, Walid, welcome. He's 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 a long time. He, he was there for, since the beginning, let's say. So um, yeah. he says that, uh, can you explain the certificate annotation? Not sure if I've used this in the past. Is, op is it OpenShift specific? Let's encrypt something else. Yeah, so that so that is OpenShift specific, and I'm going to actually show it to you right away. Um, yes, yeah, so this is OpenShift specific. This is not Let's Encrypt. Um, and since we're talking about security, I'll probably take thirty seconds to go through it. Yeah, uh, no, definitely. Let me try to bring this up. There you go. This is ad, ad hoc demos. So this Absolutely. Is, this is, this is what we love. This is what this is what 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 Lead always brings brings to the table. He brings the ad hoc. Awesome. Demos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's 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 lovely. Right. So let's see if I have the right services in here. Oh, there we go. You have to pick one. Yeah, I think I'm going to just go ahead with the with something that we have in the docs. That, that's that's going to be nice and quick. Yeah. Can so you anyways, uh, can you yeah. control plus this a little bit, make it a little bigger? Sure. Oh yeah, absolutely. There we go. Um, you know, you know what? I'm going to try one more time to find the right one I'm looking for. Yeah, let's, let's do it. We'll do it live, as they say. Oh, well, awesome! I have something here. Um, so let's let's okay. let, let's take a look at this YAML, right? Um, so so. If, so if you effectively, so these are the annotations that would effectively, um, so, so if you put in this annotation in here, you would actually have the OpenShift um, cluster provide you a certificate for your service, make it available in a config map um, and ensure that you can then mount it onto your pod. Um, so all you have to do to request it is provide an annotation on your service. Um, and what that tells you and what that tells the OpenShift controller is that, hey, somebody is requesting to have their service um, secured. And let's issue this person a set of keys or certificates and ensure that person has it. Um, so in this case, let's take a look at what we have here. 
Yeah, so that basically says, hey, I need a certificate, give it to me, and then it'll provide, the controller will provide that for you in a config map, it sounds like. Yeah, yeah. so for um, example, yeah. in this case, you know, the controller actually went in and, you know, you know, generated these, um, this CA certificate for me so that I could actually use it to ensure other services can mm -hmm. trust me. Um, now, where did this CA certificate come? It came from the OpenShift uh, system that did, did that gives me these certificates. Uh, what mm -hmm. that means is if I'm deploying on OpenShift and I want to have secure traffic coming to it, um, I can not only ensure that I have the right certificates, I also have the CA certificate that other people can trust me about. Um, and to be able to do that, you're effectively using this annotation, which I just showed you here, uh, which is this one, which is there this. There you go. Yeah. Sweet. Um, so yeah, I think if you, I think I think if if I had to speak from a non GitOps context for a mo for a moment, I would say just go ahead and go to your developer console, deploy a Git, a de deploy a Node.js application from Git, and create the, a service will be created for you out of the box. Um, just add this single one annotation, and you're going to have these certificates show up on your namespace. You just need to mount them into your pod and or your deployment, and you're good. Um, it yeah. should be that simple. Sweet, yeah. So that's 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 actually pretty cool. Um, it saves a lot of the guesswork, right? In trying yeah. to, you know, so um, um, you know, we say we're secure by default, right? Like now we're passing that on to you, right? As as a yes. developer, right? It's just like, hey, here, like you, we'll we'll give you everything you need. Pretty cool. And and there's a funny bit on that, right? Which is, um, mm -hmm. these I think have an expiry of twenty four months, um, after which it would automatically. And but it actually renews these every 13 months. Um, so which means you have a good 11 months to restart your application to pick up the new certificates. In yeah, case you there have you not. go. <laughs> um, so which means you will never be in a position where your certificate has expired if that has happened to you in the past uh, with some other systems. Which tells you deploy often. So that way you always get yeah. the latest certificate. <laughs> I mean, if you haven't deployed something for 13 months, yeah. Probably in a good state already. Your application is super stable, but then you might have other problems if you never restart it. There is an absolute great question um, in the chat, right? Um, so the question is, is there a plan to support something like Argo rollouts or is there another path to Canary releases? So this is, you have, you have the um, perfect person on for this here to see. Thank so you. what is the plan for... For for canary releases, right? So so for those of you who don't know, Argo project, right, is a series, is a collection of 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 tool sets, right? Argo CD being one of them, probably the main one. But there's other ones um, like Argo rollouts, uh, Argo workflows. Um, there's the Argo image updater, right? That that Jan uh, is a, is a big contributor on. So um, what is what is the plan in terms of having um, canary releases handled with with GitOps? Yeah, I think. Um... Right now, we are actually exploring what we should be adopting for our customers uh, all the time. Mm -hmm. um, so we do have some folks who actually use our rollouts who, while they have OpenShift GitOps installed, and that works great. Um, we did dabble with uh, some of these strategies with deployment config initially. Um, so th like, th it does solve a tiny amount of use cases, but it still does solve them. But yeah, I think um, we are still evaluating the plan to support something like Argo rollouts, whether it would be Argo rollouts or something else. Um, but it uh, may not really default to Argo rollouts. It could be something else as well. But yeah, we'll keep you updated in, in one of these streams on that. Yeah, yeah, no, this is, so this is this is um, part of the, the the cool thing about being an early adopter, right? With, with, yeah. uh, with especially with, with uh, Red Hat Emerging Technologies, right? Um, we take a lot of this feedback um, to heart. Right. So um, CMAC, who's a product manager, and, and my, myself, we talk to a lot of customers, and we we take that feedback. Um, and if it's a def, if it's a, a need, we will definitely put uh, money and engineering behind it. Um, so you know, there's this. Is, so right now, it sounds like there's a lot of conversation going on about how we're going to handle like something like canary releases. Correct. Yeah. Um, so I think, yeah, I mean, we we have folks inside Red Hat who are actually evaluating that a lot right now. So just, just to let you know that we are aware that that's an area we should probably be expanding to for our users and customers as well. Yeah. What's so you so look, this is real time. So this is what's what's cool about doing a live stream, right? Yeah. Is that it is that looks like Sealy has an update. They updated uh, GitOps 1.3.1 and it indeed fixed the permission issue. 
So awesome. um, the, uh, the, Thank you for letting the operator know. and it worked out of the box. So there you go. See, there you go. Success story, right? Right. Yep. Uh, and, um, and in general, right. like I said, if you can actually, um, you know, convey or communicate to us if any serious issues you're facing, um, we try to, you know, push out fix, fixes within days um, if needed. So, yeah, this would be one of those cases. Yeah. I um, actually want to get to uh, the actual repo you guys use. So, um, you guys, um, Get ops. You guys are under the Red Hat developer, right? Correct. Red Hat developer slash get ops operator. That that. Yes. Yeah, so, so let me put that in the chat. So by the way, uh, if you're a customer, right, um, do a support ticket always, right? But if you're in the upstream, just testing things out, um, that's the repo that uh, Shubix team works off of. So there you go. Straight straight from the uh, straight from the mouth, right? So <laughs> perfect. Yeah. Awesome. Thank. Thank you for dropping that on the chat, Christian. Yeah, so there's uh, there, there's that. Um, cool, cool. So what else is uh, um, uh, what right. else is, is is update on one point three? Or can can you tell us a little? Maybe talk a little yeah. bit about the future in these last ten minutes or so. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to do a quick quick thing in the last ten minutes. Actually, mm -hmm. some of the cash related things we are doing right now. So perfect time for asking about the future. Thank you. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so in general, I think um, I'll quickly give you an idea of some of the things that we're doing right now with caching and they're going to continue for a while. Um, in short, today when we uh, set up Argo CD, it does a few things behind the scenes that you don't know about, which is it creates its own cache of the whole cluster state. And when it does so, it actually has a high CPU usage because of you know heavy J JSON marshalling. It has a high mm -hmm. memory usage because it's reading a bunch of Kubernetes resources across your cluster. Um, we've actually had some very nice upstream improvements on those performance um, metrics. What that means is, um, for those who have who have dabbled with the Kubernetes APIs, um, you would understand this, that we've actually paginated those list calls to the Kubernetes API. Um, that's been a good improvement. We've controlled the number of concurrent API calls that go to the API server when we warm up the cluster state. Like, it, like it's called warm, it's called warming up because when your when mm -hmm. your Argosity comes up, it actually it say, "Hey, get me all the information on the cluster so that I can work with it." Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Basically, it's like get me all the information and load it into memory, which is yes. kind of. Which is a lot of information if you think about it. It's a lot it. of information. <laughs> yeah. Um, so to so to be able to do that and still be productive with. The real work that is GitOps. Um, there are a bunch of improvements happening. We are gradually going to open up these as knobs that you can use for performance tuning. Um, some of them, um, yeah. So this is kind of a slide we're going to little details. Um, there are multiple levels of caching that we do. One is no caching of your Git repositories to an absolute caching of your Git repositories, and only, we only check the cluster state. Um, this is because in case you have a situation where um, you know you know that you don't push your applications more than once a week, so we're not going to go ahead and um, you know bombard your Git repo with a request every three minutes. Uh, you could potentially then say, hey, nothing's going to change for the next one week, so probably just look at it once in four days. But other than that, whatever you had within your memory, ensure nothing on the cluster has been messed up with. Um, there are multiple levels, and they're really going to gradually expose these. Um, there's some interesting optimizations that have happened, and they will be available in this release, that the 1.3.1 or 1.3.0, um, which is we've actually been able to reduce the number of Git polling um, Git uh, polls that happen from your cluster. This is an example we took from a test. Um, and right after you would. End. So the way it works is so today, what we do is we poll Git per Git repo. What that means is if Christian, have, if Christian is using the same Git repo, I use the Git repo, we just poll it once to know if something has changed. Like not what has changed, but to know whether if something has changed. Yeah. yeah. That's a Git LS remote. Um, previously, we used to do it per application CR. So which means if there are 10 application CRs with the same Git repo, it would be done 10 times. Uh, but now we see, hey, all those 10 application CRs have the same Git repo. Let's just do it once. Um, yep. That makes so, sense, right? So, yeah. so, so previously, you were doing an LS remote um, regardless of if, if when, you know, like if we're using the same repo, that would happen twice, right? Instead of once. Correct. Gotcha. 
Nice. Yeah. yeah. That that'll so, definitely I, I can see why it's going trending down if you're only right. doing once. Yeah. <laughs> right. So there's a best case scenario, worst case scenario. There. Best case, there's just one Git repo. Worst case, everyone has a different Git repo. But then it just optimizes it to ensure that whatever we can do to reduce the number of requests, let's do it. With the amount of polling we do. Yeah, there's a question about caching. And by the way, Celia, I, I do see your question. I'll I'll ask it in a little bit, but I'll, um um William asks. Are cache levels configured on a per Argo City instance, or can it be set on a per app basis? So right now, it's on a per Argo City instance. It's 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 not on the app basis yet, but there's okay, been so it's, work it's, it's, going it's, on. Yeah. Oh, okay, so it's it's a it's a one shot. So it's like globally. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, cool. So there's there's a good thing and a bad thing. The good thing is it's one shot globally. The bad thing is it's one shot globally. Yeah. Um, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, good news. Bad news. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Right, and then the, the other bit is um, there's an improvement we did. You don't really have to put your secret in some of the existing configuration secrets. If you have a Git repo, you would actually put into a new secret and just mm -hmm. put in this label and Argo CD would know that you're talking about credentials for repositories. Uh, you don't have to. By the way, this is my favorite thing. By the way, yeah. this this update because well because if if, if uh, for you, for those of you who don't know if you used it in the past. Um, so this was in like in, in in different places, and now there's like a central way to manage um, not only your 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 Git credentials but access to that Git credentials. Right? It kind of serves like uh, two purposes. So um, this is like one of my favorite things. I'm using it all the time now. So especially in your declarative um, uh, approach to deploying Argo CD. Yeah, absolutely. And and this is something that would actually make it easy for you to configure an external secrets mechanism and pull it in um, mm -hmm. because. This can be an isolated secret altogether. You don't have to lump it into other secrets if you don't want to. Um, yeah, and the other thing is, yeah, as I mentioned previously, when that happened, we actually needed to some of the internal config maps that we use here. You could actually reference uh, any secret rather than very specific secrets. Uh, I think too interesting, but yeah. Um, the other interesting thing that we did is um, we have health checks for OpenShift deployment config and OpenShift crowds. Um, use it. And let it, and let me know if you know they're working to your needs. Um, we'll be happy to improve them. It could be in one of the patch releases or in one of the uh, minor releases or major releases. Um, but then, yeah, we we'll, we are going to ensure uh, we'll listen to feedback on this to ensure that we act on them. Yeah, yeah, and and it's um, and I don't want to. Um... Um, you know, you build, I mean, I, I do, but I, I know it's not possible you building Argo CD just for me, but um, one of the things that I like doing, we could. Uh, cause I'll, cause I, <laughs> I mean, you could, right. But like, I, I would like to hear like other people's feedback on like, what would be, what, what's a good default. I think for a lot of engineers, it's really hard to say, okay, what's a good default because it's, there's obviously, there's so many snowflakes cases, right. Edge use cases. And it's hard to choose like a, like a, like a, like a same default. But what I always do is I install the, um, the operator, and then I have to patch the, the the Argo City instance to ignore um, the the host field for my routes. And right. That's because I I always have I always set that host field to blank because if I'm deploying an application to multiple clusters, that host field is always going to be different, and um, I don't necessarily want to make a I don't I don't want to store the FQDN on my my Git. Um, oh yeah, and I think point. that's the best part about routes in general, right? You don't have yeah. to provide that host compared to an ingress yeah. object. And so, so when Argo CD says like, "Wait, you set the host to blank," um, but you know this is the actual, um, uh, the actual, the um, the actual route, right? Like the FQDN, like it'll it'll say the differences. So I always have to patch it to ignore those differences. So um, yeah. that could be a potential. Ignore Agreed. People, yeah. So. Yeah. I think yeah that, that's the same thing I do yeah and and there are actually my my repo actually has a bunch of them as well and the, but it's just that it's it's it, it's in the repo all the time and it's, hey this works but then I realize for people who are starting out they probably have to do it afresh and we need to have something yeah. more out of the box for that. Yeah, yeah yeah you're right gotcha. yeah. I think that's a good cool. feedback thank you Let's see here um so there is a question Celie um I know we we uh, we might go a little bit over but that's cool um we have uh Celie asked actually about the Argo image updater. Any any plans uh, to include that as part yeah, of the GetUps? Yep. Yes, we do. There you go. It should be very soon. That's the there you yeah. go. Jan would be happy. I know he worked yeah. a lot on that. <laughs> 
So here, just some more questions here. Make so William asked uh, the wish list is make the default dynamic so they figure it out. They meaning the process based on what they need to process at a given time. Oh, so kind of like an AI driven. Um, <laughs> no, William did not mean that. You're putting words in his yeah, mouth, Christian. Yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe he didn't mean that. I'm just saying. I'm like, well, that's you know. <laughs> I, know I like yeah. the uh, yeah. So I I I like um, I like ignoring the uh the specific fields, right? Because it's it's a um um uh it's it'll make it um ignoring specific fields make you can kind of tailor it to your workflow. So um. So that's that's yeah. really cool here. So, yeah, HPA for Argo CD processes, right? So, <laughs> cool. So yeah, um, that's it from the updates mm -hmm. from my side, Christian. Over to you. Yeah, yeah. So sweet. So, um, yeah. So thank you, by the way, for sharing all that. And I, I think I think the uh, I think the viewers always enjoy having like a sneak preview or, or having the engineers talk because. Um, like people like me in product management, right? We tend to give you a lot of fluff, right? But like when the engineers talk, they, they talk, you know, they talk tech. And I think, I think, uh, people appreciate that. So I do, um, I do appreciate, uh, appreciate that here. So, uh, we have a few minutes here. I don't know. Um, if you guys have any more questions, we'll give it another couple minutes here or so. Um, ask your questions in the chat, you know, either via YouTube or, or, uh, or Twitch. We'll all get them. Um, they'll aggregate that. Um, so uh, Waleed said um, it was informative. Thank you. Um, remember to subscribe, like, share, right? I feel like an influencer already. Please hit subscribe, like, share, do all that, do all that stuff. I, I certainly appreciate it. Um, um, so, and I actually have uh, a bit of something you guys can help me out with. Let me see if I can find it. Uh, there we go. I can copy it. There we go. So, um, we are rounding out our year here. I believe there's only like three episodes left in this year. Um, then we're, this show's going to take a little break. We're coming back next year, right? Um, stronger, better than ever. We have uh, um, uh, an amazing, um, uh, an amazing team. Right, Red Hat. Uh, this this new team that 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 is handling all the streams for us. I know I appreciate it. Andrew Sullivan appreciates it. I know he. We, we've talked about it. Um, it it's been, um, it's um, it's been great to see how much the show has grown. So, what I'm asking is, and I'm dropping this in the chat here, is I'm actually conducting a survey about the show. Right? We've been doing this for a little bit over a year, maybe almost two years now. This is the second break we're going to be taking. Um, but the um, I'm running a survey. Right? Go ahead and take the survey. Just a quick. You know, five questions about what you like about the show, what you don't like about the show, what you want to see, what you don't want to see. Um, we've been kind of we we, we did this um, kind of ad hoc, right during during the whole pandemic, and it's really great how the the show's been um, the the show's been um, growing here. Um, and so um, please take some time. I appreciate you filling out the survey. A few people already filled it out. Um, I'm gonna be mentioning this until the new year i'm gonna to try to collect some information these next months here so um so I, I do appreciate that also um if you don't see it my twitter handle is here right so you can follow me on twitter or github same same handle um on, on both sides here um and then i think one last thing i did have one last thing here uh, da, da, da. Uh, no, I think that's it. Oh yeah. So the survey, uh, next, next episode, right. We're going to have Alex Collins. I think Shubik, you know him from Intuit, Alex Collins from Intuit's coming along talking about Argo city workflows. So you guys, we, um, yeah, we kind of mentioned before about workflows uh, and rollouts, uh, Alex Collin, um, Collins, he's, uh, from Intuit, uh, one of the engineers in workflows. We're going to talk about Argo workflows. So, uh, that, that, that's cool. Uh, don't miss that. So, um, so I guess with that, we're at the top of the hour. Um, appreciate you guys watching. Um, um, so um, again, Shubik, appreciate you uh, stopping by. Um, you. So as always, as I always like to close out the show, or at, at least as as someone told me I should close out the show, is that if it's not in Git, it's only a rumor. So um, thank you, everyone, and uh, stay safe out there. Bye, everyone. Cheers. Bye.